topic is valgus knees in ad a young adolescent female i would like to call uh, dr mandar agashe first so my job for today is to say that in a valgus knee in an adolescent i will do growth modulation and i would like to start off by saying it's a, it's really my great pleasure and honor to debating this with my teacher and mentor dr rujuda mehta and i am sure that it, i am going to have a <laughs> big <laughs> beating in this uh, debate but let's play on so this was a real life conversation a few days back my hi mandar this is a 12 year old with a severe genu valgum on the right side will eight plate work now you can see on the x ray the physis are barely seen but on the mri the physis are well seen i said go for it sir so why is this so why am i in so much of favor for doing growth modulation well let's look at the principle of growth modulation we know that when we have an injury like this where there is a displaced physial injury it can affect the physis and cause this deformity with a physial arrest so we affect the physis in the similar way and convert that hurt into a healing process by creating a force which is opposite to the deformity so we have thus such severe deformity which we can affect that and cause it to correct over time we know that this has been described way back by femister in 1932 where he described drilling and then uh, rotating that piece of uh, physis and metaphysis uh, to all together blounds then described it in 1949 and we have the current version which is peter stevens version which is which was described in 2007 which really revolutionized growth modulation as we know it a little bit about blount staple which has been used so many for so many years these were rigid constraint implants where you had to use multiple of them at the knee they caused permanent epiphysiodesis and they could be done only at a specific time and they had the problem of three b's they used to bend they used to break and they used to back out and when i was doing my residency there was this big chart which was always propagated where we had to find out the exact timing of epiphysiodesis and it always used to fill fill me with dread about exactly how to find it then came the eight plates which was described in 2007 by peter stevens these are extra periosteal extra physial implants which are flexible which are easy to insert and remove and do not cause permanent epiphysiodesis so a case example a 8 year old female you can see that there is severe genu valgum over time the screws diverge and the same child gets a good correction what are the special precautions what all cases do we know that eight plates do work well we know the eight plates are good but to remember the precautions remember bad b a d remember about bone remember about age and remember about disease so bone the best bone to operate for eight plates is the lower femur and the upper tibia it is fairly good for the upper humerus and distal radius ulna but it is slow for the proximal femur and distal tibia that is the ankle and slow for the distal humerus and proximal radius ulna so we know about this adage towards the knee we go uh, we flee away from the elbow we go so genu valgum and genu varum in an ad adolescent like in our case is a perfect indication for attempting growth modulation as against that coxa vara or pubitus varus is not a perfect indication for doing growth modulation similarly age of the child is very important so when parents ask us how much time will it take for correction in growth in uh, genu valgum we can say it is about 1 degree per month for femur about 0.6 degree per month for tibia and if you do both femur plus tibia it is approximately 1.5 degrees per month this is basically for eight plates when there are it is about 2 years of growth remaining but when You you are planning to do a pet screw. Pet screw causes much faster correction. And if you have a physis which is seen on the X-ray or an MRI, I'll definitely attempt growth modulation. You should also know about something called as bone age. You should preferably do it for pre-menarchal, but we can extend the indications to even post-menarchal girls. Take an elbow X-ray, take a hand X-ray, but with pets, limits can be pushed. look at the disease the underlying disease also plays an important uh, task now in this case we have an idiopathic deformity this is the best indication for doing growth modulation but secondary deformities like skeletal dysplasia post infective post radiations these are worst indications do not attempt growth modulation 
pet screw which was described in 1998 in fact has got a resurgence of of sorts in the last few years it allows faster correction so even in kids near skeletal maturity i will do growth mo uh, gro growth modulation with the help of a pet screw it's virtually painless and allows much faster pain painless range of motion so this was a child or 10 year old showing excellent correction in just 6 months to 10 9 months again an 11 year old in one year it corrects so the question is we come back to the debate why will i do growth modulation in an adolescent with the, with valgus for this one problem we have one solution and five reasons for it first is it's effective even close to skeletal maturity there's this excellent article very recent article in 2021 where he has done a review of many articles many of them have an average age of 12 and a half 13 14 and almost 90 to 95 correction uh, percent correction is, sh is shown in these articles so this was our case a 13 year old post menarc you see the elbow x ray is completely fused but in about 6 to 8 months this corrects very well so pet screw has that advantage this method is extremely less morbid and extremely painless so this is the child one day after the eight plate surgery you can see she is walking comfortably in the wards so this is how painless this procedure can be the next is well in love size doesn't matter but unfortunately size does matter in this case the size of the incision does matter so this just 1 inch is the incision of the growth modulation scar while this is the big long scar of an osteotomy so i am sure that you will choose the small scar in this case there are minimal complications in this same article you can see that there are very very few articles which have been described very less and less less severe most of them are like screw loosening under correction or suboptimal knee range of motion almost no major complications of growth modulation versus the long big osteotomy which has non union infection implant failure and breakage and nerve injuries and what not so why should i do an osteotomy and lastly the most important thing is even if this growth modulation does not work there are no bridges burnt you can still do an osteotomy if there is no correction or a partial correction you should not give up on the growth of the distal femur fight till the end try to achieve as much correction with the growth as much as possible take a detailed informed consent from the parent that it, even if it does not work you are still in a good wicket you can do an osteotomy thus take home it is safe and effective method for angular deformities you can do eight plates and pet screw even at a later stage adolescent uh, nutritional deformity around the knee is the best indication pet screw for faster correction and thus why do will i do growth modulation in an adolescent knee it is effective it is less morbid and less painful the size of the incision is extremely small it has minimal complications and even if it doesn't work the bridges are not burned you can easily convert it to an osteotomy thank you so much